How, who felt, hands up, okay? Part C, who felt they had a good answer to this question? Justify why an expert system was determined to be unsuitable or an inappropriate solution to this problem. Hands up. Did anyone, anyone feel confident? <coughs> I, I have no memory or recollection at all, okay? Here's, here's why. Everyone should put up their hands for this, even looking at it right now, because, like in the previous question, this is a textbook question. You didn't need to know anything about the situation to be able to answer this question, okay? What's the difference functionally between an expert system um, and what pattern it is, an, an artificial neural network, okay? I know there's the difference between learning and not learning, okay? But I'm thinking about how, does, how do we, as like a developer, we're trying to choose what solution we should pick. Should I pick an expert system or should I pick an artificial neural network? What's the main difference in how they're made? or constructed, or designed? <coughs> hmm. I've, got, I've got an expert system right here, okay? Uh, I, you know, I, I know this part on the previous page. This is basically an expert system, right? Um, it's a set of rules. These have been determined by an expert, and there's logic that goes underneath one, and you go from one step to another, and you go through it very methodically. You back or you forward chain or whatever, okay, and then you come to a conclusion, okay, the decision. This is an expert system. What rules and what logic would you write if you're trying to do something like this when what you're trying to determine is whether there are abnormal cells in a slide or not? Hmm. Yeah, that's right. See, when you, when you go back to all of those, um, the, the rules that were in the, what was it? It's about the security license, yeah? Um, the rules are what we call, let me remove this off. An expert system has well-defined rules with clear logic, okay? There's lots of if this, then that, okay? Um, this flows onto this, flows onto that, right? And it's a very step-by-step -step kind of process, okay? But you can see from reading this, right, there's a lot of intuition involved uh, and experience involved in being able to determine what's a, what's a nasty um, slide and what's not, right? It's so tricky that you can see they miss a lot of them, right? It's not really simple like, oh, you just go through the checklist and if it meets these criteria, yes, it has precancerous cells, okay? It's more complex than that. It's more nuanced than that, okay? So, uh, why was, sorry, here's the question. Why is an expert system unsuitable? Um, everyone talked about the learning aspect, okay? Which is not really the point, okay? I think out of, out of two, uh, I was tempted to give you one if you explained that well, but it really was not the point, okay? Because if it was about learning, um, how do I put this? Uh, an expert system can still, if you can program it well, if the, if the rules are clear, if the logic is clear, it will just take you longer to design it, okay? But it won't necessarily be unsuitable or inappropriate, like, no, we can't possibly use an expert system for this situation, okay? It's that the nature of the problem, and this is what we mentioned under decisions for systems when we um, dealt with these kinds of, these categories of decisions for systems, um, it's that which led to the problem, okay? And basically you landed two marks, or most of you didn't, okay? So that's why, and so you justified it by saying, look, Apart from the whole learning thing, expert systems and this is, sorry, artificial neural networks, um, they get programmed in vastly different ways. Okay. Okay. So let me try and finish up. Another critically. Oh, I was so mean. Sorry. Critically evaluate the use of this neural network system compared to the previous manual system, where trained pathologists, plural, uh, would manually check each slide. Okay. All right. So. Um, I, for six marks, I was looking for not just six aspects, but were, um, were you evaluating in a, in a um, sophisticated way, okay? So let me show you, uh, how many points did I have? I had a lot of points, okay? So see if you can keep up, okay? Let's start by saying, if I'm trying to evaluate, I'm going to try and compare these two things, okay? Evaluate's a really higher order HSC keyword, okay? So it includes compare and contrast within it, right? So give me some disadvantages of the existing system, of the manual system. Give me a nice obvious one. The, sorry, say it again. 
Okay, time and labor. Yeah, it's um, it's costly with regard to time. Um, and labor, a better way to say it is money, really, because money translates to effort. Okay, so if you want labor, you have to spend money. Okay. Time and money. Time is money. It's just money, isn't it? Okay, anyway, it costs a lot. It's expensive, right? Actually, time isn't quite money here because the time aspect turns out to be crucial, okay? Because to train a cytologist or a technician to do this takes years, right? Whereas the artificial neural network, once it's trained, you don't have to retrain a new one and a new one and a new one when, you know, your actual ones get old and, you know, retire and that kind of thing, okay? So, here's my first disadvantage. Another one. It's a, it's a statistic, a really bad one in the article. We already drew our attention to it. High error rate. Yeah, the error rate's atrocious, right? The error rate is very high. Okay, 10 to 30% for anything, that's a massive proportion, okay? So these are disadvantages of the manual system. So these are reasons why later on when I do my evaluation, I'm gonna say, yeah, the neural network is very justified. Okay, now let's start talking about the, um, the artificial neural network. Okay, and let's talk about its um, pros and its cons, advantages and disadvantages. Okay, so, advantages. Now, let's skip the ones which are kind of just the opposite of this, okay? So we can already say accuracy, right? It, it can become more accurate. And also we can say speed of training, right? Because once you've got it trained, it'll, it'll work for however long, okay? What other kinds of advantages can you think of? Electronic system versus the humans. Mm. Easy ah, good. Okay, so you can get this, ex um, and this is this doesn't just apply to artificial neural networks. It's a, it's a. The comparison is between humans and an electronic decision support system of some kind. Okay, so we did a whole list of these, right? So accessibility, um, PapNet can run. 24 hours a day, right? It can just keep on going. Anyone can get to it at any time. You're not restricted to when these cytologists are available, okay? Um, so accessibility. <clears throat> we talked about the problem of retirements if a, tr if a really experienced cytologist has to retire. So what's the advantage of an artificial neural network with regard to that? Yeah, that's right. It, um, it, it, never, it never gets old. So how would we say that? It's, um, what was the word we used? Everlasting. Ever everlasting. <laughs> Everlasting by, by Chanel or something. Oh, it sounds like a perfume. Um, so it's, it's, we actually had a word for this. I think, did we say perpetual? Something like that? Okay, yeah. So you don't have the, you don't have the retraining cycle that's a problem, okay? Uh, if anything, it just gets better and better with time. It's like wine, sort of, anyway. Okay, what other advantages have we got? Um, so this is about, it, it preserves the expert knowledge base, okay? Um, and I think consistency is a really important one. Okay, so the system ought to be able to do the same things over and over again. Okay, and it's not going to miss parts of like, oh, I, I didn't see this part of the slide because I was tired, because I'm a human being. Okay, um, the system is going to be methodical and consistent in the way that looks across every single slide in the same way. Okay. All right, now it wasn't a good critically evaluate unless you told me that the artificial neural network had problems too. Okay, so what were some of its weaknesses? Yeah, that's right. So there's an initial outlay, is the best way to say it, which far outstrips, you know, the cost of employing someone day to day. That, that cost is going to add up over a long time, okay? But this system, it starts off and it's, you know, not hundreds of thousands, it's millions of dollars just to get the thing working, okay? Um, versus, say, a few hundred thousand dollars to train someone and have them actually get a few years of experience. Okay? So there's that issue. What else? What other disadvantages have we got? Hmm. I'm not going to... So you guys, we've looked at jobs before, right? So jobs is always kind of a both and, right? Because you'll, you'll destroy jobs and you'll create new ones. Okay? So I'm not going to say that explicitly. And also, I'm trying to connect it to... Uh, look at the question. I'm trying to compare it to the previous manual system, the use of the system. So this isn't just a, um, a blanket sort of social and ethical issues of all kinds. It's, a, it's about, okay, how well will this function? How well will it do its, its, do its job, right? It's an operational feasibility question, if you'd like. Okay. Um, I lost my train of thought. I was going to say something. Um, Sorry, say, say it again. 
Ah, uh, yeah, okay. So, mm, yeah, okay. So, erroneous, erroneous data might lead to poor learning. Oh, I remember the issue. Okay, uh, and here's a big one, right? It's different to the expert system. If you were to ask an expert system, okay, why is it that you decided, why is it that you decided to give, you know, such and such a guy a security license? Okay, how would the expert system respond to you? Well, number one, what's the part of the expert system that would respond? The explanation mechanism, okay? And what is the explanation mechanism going to do? Bingo, good. It's going to go through these rules and it's going to say, look, I'll tell you exactly why I gave him a license, okay? Because you told me you should, I should give a license if I do this and this. Well, I checked this and this, and that led me to this and this, and it'll go through everything. It'll tell you all the rules, it'll tell you all the data which activated those rules, and so on, okay? Now, same scenario. You go to your artificial network, right? Neural network, and you say, okay, tell me why you diagnose this patient as having uh, a positive result for precancerous cells. And the artificial neural network will reply and say, yeah, don't know, basically, right? It's like, well, experience, I think I saw the pattern that I've seen before, I think that was the pattern, um, you know. Um, there's not, there is no explanation mechanism. An artificial neural network doesn't have one, okay? And the design is gonna say, the design of the neural network will say, cause, cause I trained it, and you know, it just did its thing. So, that's a major problem when you're thinking about, okay, the use of a neural network in a medical kind of area, or well, any time where you want an explanation, okay? So, it's unable to explain. Okay. Now, I, I wasn't looking for a simple one, two, three, four, five, six to get your six marks, okay? Like I said, I was looking at the sophistication of your answer. In particular, um, did you get that? Right, now after I've got all of this, I'm going to evaluate. What judgment would you make? I think the neural network's the way to go, okay? It does have significant disadvantages, okay? But, especially when you have a look at the kinds of disadvantages the previous system had versus these advantages, it's, um, it's a pretty overwhelming choice if you can make it work, okay? So there's my evaluation. I deliver it on the basis of all of these points that I've raised. Okay. And that was the second last question. Okay.